In this lesson, we're going to be interpreting scatter plots, identifying correlations between data sets, and using lines of fit to model data. A scatter plot is a graph that shows the relationship between two data sets. The two data sets are graphed as ordered pairs in a coordinate plane. Scatter plots can show trends in the data. So for the first example, we have a scatter plot that shows the amount x in grams of sugar and the number y of calories in 10 smoothies. So here's our graph right here. Y-axis is calories, x-axis is sugar. Part A, how many calories are in the smoothie that contains 56 grams of sugar? Well, grams of sugar is the x-axis, so I wanna find 56 on the x-axis and figure out what ordered pair that corresponds to. So here's 56 right here in between 54 and 58. If I, so I, if I go up, there's only one, and this ordered pair says that the smoothie that has 56 grams of sugar is 270 calories. So that's our answer for part A. Part B asks, how many grams of sugar are in the smoothie that contains 320 calories? So now we're talking about calories, that's the y-axis, so I'll go up to 320 and I see that there's only one ordered pair at this y value and the x value is 70. So the 320 calorie smoothie has 70 grams of sugar. Of sugar. And then for part C, what tends to happen to the number of calories as the number of grams of sugar increases? Well, we don't know for sure, because this is not like a line or any other sort of function that uh, has a definite pattern, but we can kind of see that it tends to go up, right? If I increase the number of grams of sugar, then the number of calories tend to go up, okay? So for part C, what tends to happen to the number of calories as the number of grams of sugar increases, the number of calories also increases. Calories increase. And now we're done with the first example. So what we just looked at in uh, example 1C, that's actually called correlation. A correlation is a relationship between data sets. You can use a scatter plot to describe the correlation between data. So if you look here, positive correlation is when x and y are both increasing at the same time. As x increases, y increases, okay? So that is a positive correlation. A negative correlation is if one of the variables is increasing, the other one is decreasing. So in this case, as x increases, so as if I go towards the right, my y value is tending to decrease. No correlation, for this example, is if there's really no distinct pattern that you can tell from the data. So here, it doesn't really look like it's increasing or decreasing. These points are scattered all over the place, so there is no correlation. For example two, tell whether the data shows a positive, negative, or no correlation. So for part A, it's age and vehicles owned, okay? So the x-axis is person's age, y-axis is the number of vehicles that they have owned. And we see that th this data is kind of scattered all over the place, okay? There's not really any trend. You might want to say that there is a slight positive correlation, but it's definitely not strong, if anything. So I would definitely say that part A, there's no real correlation. For part B, we can see that the data is definitely more obviously trending in a negative correlation here because as I increase my temperature, the number of coats sold per day is really decreasing, okay? So this is pretty obviously a negative correlation. And now we're done with this one. Now we're gonna talk about using lines of fit to model data. When data show a positive or negative correlation, you can model the trend in the data using a line of fit. A line of fit is a line drawn on a scatter plot that is close to most of the data points. To make a line of fit to model data, step one, make a scatter plot of the data. Step two, decide whether the data can be modeled by a line. Step three, draw a line that appears to fit the data closely. There should be approximately as many points above the line as below it. Step four, Write an equation using two points on the line. The points do not have to represent actual data pairs, but they must lie on the line of fit. 
The table shows the weekly sales of a DVD and the number of weeks since its release. Write an equation that models the DVD sales as a function of the number of weeks since its release. Interpret the slope and y-intercept of the line of fit. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is take this table of values and plot them on the graph right here to make a scatter plot. So I'm just gonna plot all these ordered pairs. So I have uh, one week is 19, so that's right here. Two weeks is 15 million dollars. Three weeks is 13 million dollars. Four weeks is 11 million dollars. Five weeks is 10 million dollars. Six weeks is 8 million dollars. Seven weeks is 7 million dollars. And eight weeks is $5 million. All right, so now we've plotted our data on this graph. Now we want to draw a line to fit this data on the graph. So we want our line to be somewhere that is really close to all these points, okay? And if we can, we can try to have as many points below the line as above the line. So I'm going to draw my line of fit right now. So I drew my line and it is pretty close to most of the points. And I have a couple points that look like they're on it or very close to being on it. I have three above and then I have three below. So this is a pretty good line of fit, okay? So now what I need to do, now that I've drawn my line of fit, is I need to write an equation of this line. So what I wanna do is I wanna find two points on the line. These points do not need to be in the data set, they need to be on the line, okay? So I see that in theoretical zero weeks, I would have sold $20 million. So I'm gonna use this order pair zero comma 20 and I'll draw it in red so it's not confused with the data points. And then I see that I have this ordered pair right here which is five comma 10. This is part of the data but I'm gonna draw over it in red as well. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is find the slope and I can do that from the graph. Okay, so if I start here and go here, I'm going down to four, six, eight, and 10, okay? So my change in Y is negative 10. And then my change in X, well, let's figure it out. Let's scroll down here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, well, negative 10 over five is the same as negative two. Okay, now I'll change back to my black pen. So my slope of the line, M, is equal to negative two. Now I need to figure out the y-intercept. Well, from the graph, I can see the y-intercept is 20. That was our first ordered pair that we had, zero comma 20. Okay, so b is equal to 20. So now I just have to put this into an equation. So I'm gonna do y equals negative two x plus 20. So this is the equation of the line that represents um, the line of fit for this situation. Now if we go back up, the next thing we need to do is interpret the slope and the y-intercept of the line of fit. Okay, well, the slope is the uh, rate of change in this case. So basically, it is how the sales are changing per week, okay? Well, it's negative two, and we have millions of dollars. So each week, on our line of best fit, the amount of DVD sales is decreasing by $2 million, okay? So I'm gonna write that here. So each week, the sales decrease, that's where the negative comes in, by $2 million. Okay, so that's interpreting the slope. Now we have to interpret the y-intercept. If we look back at the graph, the y-intercept means that at the zero week that we've sold 20, but that doesn't make any sense here because you can't sell something in week number zero. Okay, so this actually doesn't make sense. The first week you sell 19 million, and on this line it's more like 18 million, but in this case there is no um, context for the y-intercept. So now we're done with this one.